Yeah, I think that's I think that's the issue. But it, there's really some quite sinister things have have happened. Uh, be, you know, because of this show, I got banned from Egypt. Uh, they just—that's the very clever way for archaeologists to make sure that no criticism can come can come in of their sites. Is just to of their take on things. Is just to ban the critic from from coming there. I got banned from Serpent Mound in Ohio. Can you imagine that? I mean, Serpent Mound is a national landmark. People should not get banned from 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 going there. When you say banned, meaning you tried to go there to film or yeah, just to visit? Yeah, when, when when we. When we approached them to make an episode of, of my Netflix series at Serpent Mound, initially they were welcoming, and then they heard that Graham Hancock was presenting the series. And immediately they turned around and said, no, filming permission is refused because Hancock's views differ from our own. Well, I was able to make a virtue of that um, in the sense that I stood at the gates of Serpent Mound, which were closed, and uh, I read out their letter. Where they where they say that just because I don't agree with them, they won't allow me access to the site. Fortunately, we have masses of footage, drones, and and and, and other things, and we were able to do the show. But it shows again the limited mentality. People must be very insecure in their ideas if they if they actually have to ban critics from expressing alternative ideas. And what is the significance of Serpent Mound? Well, Serpent. The first the first and foremost thing is it's an incredible beautiful amazing site which everybody who can get to Ohio should should go and see it's just a most incredible place but secondly there are indications that it's much older than it's supposed to be and that has particularly to do with the way that the jaws of the serpent line up to the setting sun and because the changing positions of the sunset due to changes in the Earth's motion. So this is it here? That's mm -hmm. it there. We're yep. looking at the, 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 that's the head of the serpent and is looking straight at the setting sun. And this, uh, this alignment was perfect about 12 and a half thousand years ago. It's slightly off today and that's because of changes in the rising point of the sun over thousands and thousands of years. And, and, and that's what they don't like. They don't want Serpent Mount to be older. There's a, one group of archaeologists think it's just a thousand years old. Another group think, well, it, maybe it's two and a half or three thousand years old. Um, but the notion that it might be twelve thousand years old is something they don't want to, anybody to hear, really. The ancient world was in tune with a force that modern man has lost touch with. There are countless examples across the world of ancients aligning their monuments and creations with the world above that they were constantly observing in the sky. One of the best examples of this can be found at Serpent Mound in Ohio. On June 20th, 2022, on the summer solstice eve, I had the fortune of witnessing one of the most spectacular forms of archaeoastronomy one can observe. I flew my drone from the bank of Brush Creek to observe the spectacular alignment of the ancient mound work at Serpent Mound. Stretching over 1,300 feet from tail to mouth, this gigantic earthwork is perhaps the finest ancient geoglyph in the world. I was there to capture a time lapse of the alignment of the serpent's jaws with the setting sun. I tried my best to calculate the exact moment of the sunset in order to capture the entire phenomenon before my DJI Mini 3 Pro would run out of battery. As I stared at the controller screen while the time lapse took place, I couldn't help but feel as if I was witnessing genius something that I didn't quite understand the meaning of, despite it feeling like I should. I first found out about this event by reading Graham Hancock's book, America Before. If you're not aware of who Graham Hancock is, he's a famous author and researcher of ancient history who recently has been vindicated despite decades of accusations of being a pseudo-historian for some of his theories. Many of these theories revolve around the idea of a lost civilization and an ancient cyclical reset of humanity. In his book, America Before, Graham points out many examples that show humans have been in the Americas far longer than mainstream academia cares to admit. Many of Graham's theories are starting to be proven plausible with new evidence of ancient cataclysms nearly 12,000 years ago as well as more evidence of an ancient human past in the Americas that far exceeds the current estimates of 14,000 years by mainstream archeologists. As we've seen over and over again throughout history, whenever the academic establishment's monopoly on a truth is challenged, they resort to personal attacks and outright censorship to hold on to their dogma. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having experts to rely on for information or research about the past. 
But as Graham has recently said, there is something wrong with them having a monopoly on the narrative of humanity's past, especially in the age of the internet, where crowdsourcing is uncovering new information on the history of humanity every single week. There has been ongoing controversy at Serpent Mound about the age of the earthwork. There's some evidence within the alignment of the archaeoastronomy phenomenon at Serpent Mound that this could have been created first around 12,000 years ago. Graham explains this in his book, and I will go over that evidence and information in this video. Let's get into the details about the controversy of the age at Serpent Mound. Graham explains how this place had two very special qualities to it. The serpent is located in an ancient crater that was created by an impact. Magnetic anomalies exist in the areas that cause compasses to give inaccurate readings. The location of the serpent also happens to be the border of the glacial mass of the last ice age 21,000 years ago. The border between ice and land. There has long been an argument about whether it was the more recent four ancient culture or the more ancient Adena culture that built the mound. Graham Hancock makes the proposal that both of these cultures reconstructed and rebuilt the structure that had already been there from a previous age. It wasn't until 1987 that anyone had even made the connection that the serpent was an archaeoastronomy site marking the summer solstice. Two researchers, Clark and Marjorie Hardman, brought this to light. It has long been assumed that the Serpent Mound was built about 2,000 years ago. But because the Earth does not rotate perfectly on its axis, and it goes through a cyclical cycle of precession, this age has been questioned by independent researchers. This means that the setting sun would not always have been exactly where it is today on the summer solstice. 2,000 years ago, the summer solstice sunset would have been about three sun diameters south of the horizon in alignment with the serpent. In Graham's book, America Before, he explains the four logical conclusions that present themselves as a result of this information. The four possible conclusions are, one, its builders were very poor astronomers. Two, the intention was never to orient the serpent with the summer solstice at all. Three, the Hardmans were right in their general thesis, but had gotten their observational point and sight lining wrong. Or four, the alignment had not been made 2000 years ago, but far long ago. After doing the math and observing the obliquity cycle, it becomes clear that if the intention for the builders of Serpent Mound was to create a solstice marker, and that the builders successfully did so in alignment with the sunset on that date, then that would put the construction of the serpent to around 11,000 BC. This makes archeologists very uncomfortable. Anytime an old age is hypothesized in ancient American history, it is immediately dismissed despite the evidence presented. Examples of this can be found at Huayotlaco in Pueblo, Mexico, which I visited in the spring of 2022 to tell the story of the discovery and subsequent cover-up of human artifacts that dated to a minimum of 250,000 years. It's my personal opinion that the management at Serpent Mao needs to get a grip and have more respect for researchers like Graham Hancock. There is no room for censorship of ideas and outright bans of people from historical sites in America. Not only is that bad science, but it is petty and shows extreme insecurity. So that's the short story of the controversy at the incredible Serpent Mound, a landmark that I cherish despite the Orwellian behavior they have shown toward Mr. Graham Hancock, the man that has introduced more people to the site than just about anyone. Thanks for watching Incredible History. If you liked this episode, please like, ring the notification bell, share with someone you think might find this interesting, and give me a follow on Twitter. Until next time, take care.